end of June we decided it was time to move on from Kingston and not because we were asked to, it turns out short term moorings are always just to skip across the river with plenty of room for four or four around there. As it turns out, Ollie was offered a place in a lovely nursery back up in Hertfordshire and we took the bait and started our journey back up the River Lee. But not before a sunny cruise down the Thames and a stopover in Chiswick to pick up our new cargo bike. consideration of the tide times and thoughtful gutsy boat handling. After six long blasts signalling a full turn around to port, Corey guided Bora back up against the tide and into that rough swell at the mouth of the lock. Do you want me to do anything? Can you pop the fenders over on that side? As Limehouse is such a deep lock, ropes are wrapped around tall, thick steel bars that run up the wall rather than cleats on the ground, as with most other locks. Then, with crew helping to pin the boat to the wall, the ropes jump up the steel as the thundering water rises in the lock. Erin's first go on the bike with Ollie in it. She's just had a practice run down the path and back. The hardest bit's getting it on the stand. <laughs> Where you go, Mama? Hi mama! We did it. Yay! Now we've got to stop it. And put it on a stand. Yeah. That's the fun bit. Yeah. Watch this. Oh we are. <laughs> you take your foot off just as you think it's gonna fall, but that's the bit that's stopping you falling. You need to yeah. trust the stand. There you go. Did it! How was that, Ollie? Awesome. <laughs> Look at your hair, your wind swept. <laughs> we hopped back up the River Lee, stopping in East London's Hackney and Walthamstow marshes before actually leaving the big smoke. Back in the borough of Hertfordshire. Small rivers and low bridges. After a night in Enfield, we continued on to Waltham Abbey, where we carefully chose a mooring that would give us enough solar power to keep our batteries topped up but enough shade from the imminent heat wave that was about to sweep through the UK. Are you hot, baby? Oh, isn't that the best place to be right now? This is how you stay cool in a boat. <laughs> What's going on, Ollie? Yay. Having fun? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, go get him. <laughs> Yay! Did that, Daddy? Hi. Okay, so here we have our trusty old Cabola boiler, which is a gravity-fed uh, diesel drip boiler, which is fantastic. No moving parts, nothing really to go wrong. Just need to clean it out every now and then and it works really well. And it's connected to the central heating at the back there. 
and then also our colorifier and the engine the white pipes are uh, when the the coil that's connected to the engine to heat the hot water and so what we've done well the issue that we have is that this is a five kilowatt capacity boiler and in summer we want to heat our hot water with it because we don't want to turn the radiators on, we don't want to increase the temperature in the boat but we do want hot water. So then we isolate the radiators so that the only circuit that's open is the feed and return coil to the chlorifier which is great except the pipe diameter into the chlorifier goes down to 15 mil on the feed and the return. That's probably not really wide enough for convection to work. So this boiler works really off convection. The radiators are higher than the level of the boiler. So the heat rises, right? So then heats up the radiators that go through the boat that make it all nice and warm and then as the heat's dissipated the liquid cools it falls to the the lower pipe at the back there and comes back to the furnace to be reheated so it works really well after it being on for sort of half an hour or so there's really good flow you get really good heat throughout the boat and through all the radiators when the radiators are isolated and it's just going through the chlorifier, there's uh, the one the pipe diameter is not really wide enough to allow for convection, and the boiler is too powerful for that. It it's a five kilowatt boiler, which heats the boat really really well, but it's too powerful for the for the chlorifier. The boiler ends up getting hot quickly and getting to the point where it's, it's too hot and the safety cutout will, will activate and um, stop the boiler with our water still cold. So what I've come up with that I'd like to do is to pump the water through and to do that I need to install a, a water pump on the return side, on the cooler side, so that when the boiler gets to a certain temperature the pump will activate, pump the water through, which will heat our hot water quicker and also take a lot of the heat away from the boiler. It's not a problem of there being too much heat, it's a problem that the heat's not balancing between the boiler and the chlorifier. So increasing the, the flow of the water will help achieve that balance. So I've taken off uh, the return line and I'm plumbing in some connections to connect a pump. And here's the return line and the pump. Um, it's all, <laughs> it's not the neatest soldering, I must admit, but it should work. And the pump we're using is a hot water pump from the Mercedes SLK. It's a Bosch pump, 12 volt. I've chosen to give this a go because the hot water pumps specifically designed for this are about 150 quid and no doubt they're very good um, but it's just quite expensive and this was 25 pounds um, from a wreckers online so if this works then that's fantastic if not then we might need to look at getting a, a better one but it's Bosch um, it's off a Mercedes it was used as a um, a heating pump on the car so it should be able to take the temperatures that we're talking about and it's not massive temperatures um, well it, it can be but the return should be I imagine up to 70 degrees that should be about the hottest the return line should get and then when this is only part of it but when all of this is plumbed in we'll have the um, option to isolate the pump completely so it just works in the, the normal way Obviously in winter when the radiators are on all the time, we don't need to worry about this. We can just isolate the pump. Um, it's only when it's on in summer we want to do it. So hopefully, fingers crossed, our second-hand car pump from the wreckers will solve this problem. It's plumbed in. Uh, we'll check for leaks. 
and there's only one, <laughs> which is pretty good, that's been fixed. Um, now I've wired it in, and I'm about to start this pump. And it's flowing. What do you think, Ollie? What's that noise? Ollie doing final checks. You approve? <laughs> no leaks? It's getting the air out of the system? It's quite yeah. quiet, isn't it? I thought it would be a bit louder. Mm, that's good. The next step when I finish off the electrics properly is that we'll put a thermostatic switch on here that will be probably connected to the boiler somewhere so that when the boiler gets up to about 70 degrees it turns on and then it'll turn it off again when it gets to about 50 or 60. But in the meantime we'll just manage it manually. Yay! Yay! Fast hot water! So we'll light the boiler later and see if it actually works <laughs> how I imagine it should. <laughs> it can take the heat. Right. If not, it only costs us 25 quid and a, a day's worth of fun. That's right. Right, Ollie. <laughs> Brad. Okay, we should probably stop playing with these things. <laughs> the boiler's been lit. It's burning really well. You can see it in there. And the temperature's coming up to 60. And the temperature on the water, 30 degrees. So this normally takes us probably about an hour, no more, probably about two hours, and it's really fiddly. You have to light it, get it warmed up, and then uh, open the radiators to vent some of the heat before it gets too hot and cuts itself off, and then turn it down, and then turn it back up before it gets too low and blows itself out. Um, so it's, it's not something that's, that's easily done, um, and two hours worth diesel whip burning that whole time as well. I'm going to turn this new pump on and we'll see what happens. All right, well, we'll leave it there and come back with an update a little bit later. The goal was to be home, however fluid that notion is these days, in time for Ollie's first birthday at the start of August. And Broxbourne was the place. We started cruising when he was just four months old. And while it's been challenging at times, because whose first 12 months as new parents isn't, right? But we really can't think of a better start at life for our little sailor. This one, man. You're dancing. You love it. Dancing cows. Dancing on me. <laughs> Just putting in our new solar panels. We've got two brand new ones. There's one of the older ones there. Do you reckon we're going to get four times the amount of power? Is that right? Yeah. These are 90 watt each. And then these ones are 315 watt. But they're bifacial, so they can do, they say, up to 400 watts. So we should expect to get at least three times, maybe four times the amount of power. Yeah. And here comes Jerry with a present. Oh no. Jerry! My little murderess. Oh, that's really not okay. Poor oh, little moose. Gross. Just fixed the first solar panel onto the roof. And Corey's just finishing off the second one. We've got hinges so we can slide the panels off the roof if need be because they're 25 kilos each so it's quite a bit of weight when we're trying to take the wheelhouse apart but um so far it's been okay actually to take them off hey with the actual panels on there 
good. Good to have the option to do it in the end to this. Yeah. They won't be particularly easy to slide on and off, but they won't. They won't just drop off while <laughs> we're oh, cruising along. Yeah. Gonna put them on the roof and connect it up. Full sun, you're gonna go see what we're getting in our solar. 414 watts, mm -hmm. 25 amps going into the batteries, mm -hmm. 30 amps coming off the panels. The fridge is on, taking about five. Yeah. Awesome! <laughs> Gotta be happy with that. How much do you reckon that is compared to the old ones? In this, it's pretty good light today, so they would have been getting 120, 100, 120, 140, I'd say, at the moment. Hmm. Actually, this is being limited by the charge control that we've got. Because we've got a, a 100, 100 volt, I think it's 100 volt, it's definitely 30 amp um, MPPT uh, charge controller. So it's we're at the maximum at the moment, 30 amps. Because it's bright sunshine, they, they could be getting more. Yeah, just have to hook up our old ones as well. Yeah, we've got a separate charge controller for those. Mm. Um, that'll add more. But yeah, I wonder what we would get if we... If we had um, a bigger charge control. The problem is the bigger charge controls are really expensive. Mm. If we're putting 20 amps in into the batteries for a period of five hours or so, a day, say, that's a hundred amp hours. How many do we need in a day? I don't know. Mm. At least 60, I think. We, we consume about, I think it was about 60 amp hours. Mm. Worked out. Awesome. Yeah. You like it? <laughs> this is how we travel now. Oh. Thanks for tuning in to Five Knots Cruising. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as it really helps us to get our video out to more viewers. We'd love to hear your feedback, questions and ideas, so please drop us a line either on our Instagram page or YouTube channel.